kind of things that you uh, think about when you're paddling like um, let's say your top hand yeah well I'm trying not to push so much with the top hand I'm trying to pull with the bottom okay so what about and that's basically the same idea that I do as well if you want to bury the blade okay. try to bury the blade before you pull but it's so I don't know that that's happening. Yeah, okay, let, let, let's, let's talk about the top hand, okay? So, if we take it to the extreme, what will happen if you're pushing too much, your, your top hand will go clear down to the gun, right? Okay. So, so we know that that's your, uh, like what I'm doing right now is, is, uh, is the extreme, you know, if, if someone's doing that, then that means it's way too far. So obviously, and then the other extreme would be, you know, you're not pushing at all. You're, you're, you're going like, you're just pulling with the bottom, but you're keeping your top arm straight. So obviously, somewhere in the middle is, is going to be uh, what you're shooting for. Now, just looking at your top hand, I would say that it seems like it might be dropping maybe a couple inches more than it should because it's sort of a sign that maybe your your, your blade is coming back a little too far so uh, before you pull it out you know what I mean yeah in other words what I use as a guide is usually my bottom hand like like when my bottom hand gets to about my knee, that's pretty much where you want to end your stroke. Now you're, you're actually, it's actually pretty good. Your, your bottom hand is going somewhere just past your knee before you pull out. And, and for your, your body makeup, that might be just fine. I'm just trying to give you some, some tips. And of course, what we're shooting, what we're shooting for is, is developing a stroke so that if you need you know, maximum speed, what, what would you do? You know? But in between those times, you want to be comfortable because, like right now, you're, you're probably paddling at your, your comfort level, you know. Yeah. You could probably paddle for six hours like this, right? Yeah. Or so. <laughs> so. Yeah. And that's okay because you need that, right? But when you want to go really fast, like if someone's a little liar, you want to catch up, you need to have. Uh, some adjustments, you know, it may not be super efficient, but it's going to give you that maximum speed. So, so that's what I'm thinking is that, um, you know, when, when you paddle, kind of look at ending your stroke when your hand is maybe closer to your knee. You can go past your knee, and uh, it, it'll feel like you're, you're ending your stroke too soon. And it, if, if you did some, you know, speedometer checks or whatever, you would find that even though it feels like you're getting a lot of push, it, it doesn't really do much for the speed of the boat. You know? so, now your, your bottom hand, okay, so let's talk about pressure. Now, one of the things my brother used to describe is if, if, if you can drive down on your paddle, and pretend you're like lifting your butt up off your seat. That's the kind of sensation that you should have. Again, this is for a more intense stroke. But you can almost feel like you're like all kind of demonstrating a little bit. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, you feel like you're uh, almost going over top of your paddle. And it's like, it's almost like you're climbing a rope, but your paddle shaft is the rope, and you're pulling yourself up. Of 
course, you can only do that so much, but that's kind of the sensation. Uh, that everything is, you're, you're thinking about this. You're not really like pulling back with your bottom arm so much. It's, you're, you're driving down and the strength of your torso is just being transferred to your paddle by your arm. So your arm is just sort of a connecting piece. If you buy thinking about like climbing up on your paddle, pulling yourself up, it forces your body to uh, use your your strong muscles in your in your, in your torso. So that's probably and then the thing is naturally me and some other people it's, it's naturally to do the opposite. You know, it, 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 it feels better to, to, to drive down and it feels better to, to pull back, you know. So you sort of have to, um, and again, if, it's, if you're comfortable doing what you're doing, that's good because that's your recovery stroke, right? But, but when you're at the start or something and you want to get yourself in a good position, that's where you want to switch gears a little bit, you know, you know drive down, get, get your paddle out uh, quick, and um, and then you can settle down into something more efficient. But I would say that, you know, obviously overall, your, your stroke is, is correct. I mean, you, I can see you're, you're driving with the, your leg on the side of your stroke, and that's what you're supposed to do, which means you're using your legs, right? Um, now, one of the things that drives my brother crazy about what my uncle does sometimes is he pushes with his legs it seems like too much it, it might be okay for rich but it, it almost seems when steve watches that well i can't straighten it out i mean i don't straight i don't no no you won't want to straighten it out howdy it's just a slight not a slight bend no no you don't want to matter of fact you, the angle of your I watch a lot of a lot of paddlers don't even need your leg. I mean you don't see that motion. Well yeah, you can stiffen up your leg and probably howdy if, if you would watch my brother, you probably wouldn't see much bend in his knee just uh -huh. because he tends to stiffen up his leg before he strokes. But I, I kinda like that a little bit of like well, we, I like that. Yeah, I, I think it helps keep your legs loose. Um, so that's another thing. I, I think your your legs are doing exactly what they need to do. You know, if, if you weren't doing that, then you're transferring your your force by your butt. And I don't know if that's a good way to do it. And in reality, it's it, it, it's a way to get your leg sort of into your stroke a little bit, you know, which is important. See, I don't have a race stroke. My race stroke would kill me. I mean, I would only last up to that last pontoon, and then I'd be done. But that's sometimes that's all you need, though, right? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> But I couldn't recover, I don't think. Well, that's, that's where I mean, my goal is to get to be two hours of nice, hard, rhythmic paddle. And it would be my goal for now. Yeah, I mean, that would be good. But, but generally, you know, one strategy that works, has been working for me, being kind of light and not really strong, is, is just to hang with the pack. Yeah. Paddle as least as I can. <laughs> like look at my heart rate. You know, I might start out at 170 heart rate at the start, but then settle on a wake. As long as I'm in the lead pack, you know, or sometimes I'm in the second pack lately. But anyway, 
whoever I'm racing, you know, it's a two hour race, you know, I gotta settle in and I just kind of concentrate and, and make sure my heart rate starts dropping, you know, 150, you know, uh, or so, because at 150 heart rate, I, I can do that for kind of forever, you know. Uh, but beyond 150, then, you know, I, I'm gonna get. See, I'm at about 115. Okay. <laughs> you know, and anything, when I start going above that, starts going to we get very uncomfortable. Well, that's where, I mean, you know, if you would take the mathematics and do rest and heart rate to age to, you're going to find that guy 80 years old, his rate is considerably down. Yeah, you should, you probably shouldn't paddle. I think it's 220 minus your age of like 140 heart rate. You definitely don't want to be paddling that, you know, for very long. I couldn't do it. Well, I had to give up running. What's what's your maximum heart rate right now? You think about 120. 120. Okay. Well, see, that's what you do now. Is you, you work with that. See, right. my X factor, my I have a lower pumping rate out than most normal people. I had radiation poisoning as a cure for cancer, which deteriorated my heart muscle. Okay. And I don't pump much on the out on the outflow. Okay. So the first time I run up the stairs, I get really winded. But if I do it moderately ten times, I'm better off. Okay, okay. Well, another thing, I don't know how much how scientific this is, but if you completely relax in between strokes, I mean, a lot of times, like your hands should feel limp, you know. Right. And then I you, try not to squeeze it. Oh, well, it's okay to squeeze when you're I mean, paddling, yeah, I mean, but then, but then I go. Mean, choke. Yeah, but then go. Make sure your hands are completely relaxed when you come forward. Okay. Now, what I think that does is it, is it almost like helps your heart circulate blood because it's, it's almost like a, a pumping action in your. So I'm pretty sure, don't your, uh, I think your veins and arteries, don't they kind of have a valve one way? So if you think about it, tensing and relaxing, tensing and relaxing is, is a good way to. So, so you might be able to kind of generate a little bit of that, you know, over overcome some of that by completely relaxing. And then, now you, I'm guessing you, you probably do that anyway. You, you know. Yeah, well, that's, the thing that, that's why I like the canoe rather than the kayak. Yeah. I don't get that little bit of a break. Break, yeah. Now, yeah. now hey, have you had any trouble uh, cramping in your forearms? No. Well, see, that means you're, you are relaxing. You don't have a death grip on your paddle. Uh, I, know I, some, don't cramp, I don't cramp up the body. Yeah. See, that's that's one sign that you know you people that have a constant grip. They're they're the ones that typically complain about you know their arms uh, cramping. So that's yeah. Now another thing you, you can help your heart. You probably do this anyway. Is is work on your breathing? Because yeah. because humans tend to breathe shallow. It's weird, even when you're in a race. And Uncle Rich told, talked about this, I don't know how young we were, but he, he constantly reinforces that you need to blow completely out. Matter of fact, blowing out is more important than breathing in. Right? Because then you get rid of all that bad air. And you don't have to do that like, say, every five minutes. Just yeah. blow completely out. Take a deep breath, do that a couple times, and you know, it's amazing. It, it just it gives you that little boost. So, so I think, again, you I'm sure you do that, right? Being a runner and right. stuff, you, you know about how important it is to, 
yeah, and plus force a few deep breaths is I think it helps purge, you know, that CO2 and, and then you get a, you know, so, so again, those two things. How about piling per side? I mean, I just change what I need to. I mean, if it's two strokes or if it's ten. Yep, and that's exactly... I mean, I can't get more, you know, if I'm... I don't want to get it out of whack. So, if it only takes one to get it moving too much to the right, then I need to go over. Well, I think if you're training, you need to do four or five times, like... You know, don't, don't go over five and don't go under four. You know what I mean, and, and train yourself for about that many times. Like in a C1, that's it's pretty typical. No matter where you target it. Yeah. And um, now, if you're in a, some of the boats, that's one of the advantages, like the D3X and double X and these higher volume boats. You, you tend to be able to get one more stroke on a side. Like when I went from a, whatever prior boat, this I think I had a original Diller C1 and when I when I went to this one it it tracks a whole lot straighter and I got an extra stroke on the side yeah. so now I can go five or six times on the side whereas before it was four or five so um, now in a race you just throw all, the, throw all that out the window you know what I mean yeah see I'm not used to this water either even that boat pushing over to us like that is creating uh, a little bit of a deal for me. Yeah. Well, it, let's come. Let's, let's talk about that. That's actually.